I'm sure that our speaker today will provide us with valuable insights on the importance of firms, not only to international trade, but also to international economics in general. Elhanan was one of the leaders of the school of thought that created the new trade theory. Not happy with that revolution, which would make a fabulous career for anybody, he went on and said, well, this model should be dynamic. And he said, well, we not only need models that introduce imperfect competition, models that are dynamic, but we need to think also about political economy. For most of the 20th century, we had these two approaches, one based on factor proportions, the other on productivity variations, and they were focused on sectoral trade flows. Then came the sort of big change that was motivated by two types of observations. One observation is that in the data, there were very large flows of what we call intra-industry trade. The other observation, which led to uh, a revision of the trade theory, was the observation that a lot of trade takes place across countries with very similar uh, factor compositions, very similar levels of development. So these type of observations triggered uh, the rethinking of international trade, which generated what uh, Jaume described as the new trade theory. So this generated a much sort of richer structure that allowed scholars to generate theoretical predictions that in principle could be brought to the data. So what they found out uh, in these, uh, what people find, uh, found out in these various data sets is that exporters in an industry look quite different from non-exporters. This is the punchline. Exporters, despite the fact that they export, they still sell a lot of their stuff in the domestic market. So they export only a fraction of their output. They are typically bigger and more productive than non-exporters, both in terms of labor productivity and in cases where total factor productivity was measured. And typically, exporters pay higher wages. There are two empirical findings which are pretty striking. Low productivity firms get out, and market shares get reallocated to the bigger and more productive firms, many of them who are exporters. Because the industry loses the least productive firms, and the more productive firms get a higher weight, average industry productivity rises. So the process of trade liberalization becomes linked now with average productivity. If you take this analytical framework and you ask the question, when firms have an option to invest in new technologies in response to trade liberalization, which are the firms that will do it? What Paula showed was that the biggest effect comes among the firms who are the most productive among the non-exporters because they now switch to export. What happens is that in each country, the productivity gain in its exportable sector is bigger than the productivity gain in its import, import competing sector. A lot of the wage inequality in the data is within sectors rather than across sectors. The other thing is a lot of it is within occupations rather than across occupations. And the most striking piece of evidence which comes from labor economics is that if you control for worker characteristics most of the inequality doesn't come from the fact that he's smarter than I am in a way that we can measure or more experience. Most of it comes from nowhere, and they called it residual wage inequality. So the relationship between trade and inequality is non monotonic And in the analytical paper that we wrote before we did the empirical work, we proved this as a general result. As multinationals, they have to make decisions, or every firm has to make decisions in at least two dimensions. One is uh, whether to integrate in the domestic market. The other is whether to outsource in the domestic market. 
So this is a case where the firm chooses to be in the domestic market, but has to choose between integration and outsourcing. So these are, or sometimes it's referred to as make or buy decision. It's a very common decision that firms have to make. Things are changing constantly. New data sets become available in different countries. There are more episodes that one can study. And all the students in the audience are invited to join the race. Thank you very much. Thank you.